What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the 59th SoCast. Today is December 3rd, 2015. So, yeah, let's go down the lineup we have today. First off, we have Moogle Master 102. What's going on? Next off, we have Kamasubu. Yo. To his right, you have Ghost Dragon. <clears throat> What's up? Next one we have is Freddy Fastfuck. Hey, old people. Next off, we have Fresh. Good evening. Long returning Miles. What's up? Fred Fox. Yeah. Last but not least, we have our guest of honor, Jeff the Hero. What is going on, everyone? I'm glad to be part of the Dark Side Phil fan club. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what we are. This is the uh, most loyal fan club of them all, of course. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the 59th edition. Thank you, Mr. Nomad, for the fantastic introductions. And thank you for tuning in to, uh, to this fantastic podcast. So, uh, no announcements, I guess. There's not really anything we need to uh, take care of to begin with. Thank you guys very much for the viewers submitting music. Uh, I hope this is a successful experiment, and I hope you guys enjoy that. All right, let's get straight into this. Mr. Jeff. Yes, what is up? Please, for our new listeners, for people that may not have been around uh, in your heyday, let the people know maybe what some of us old-timers would know you for, and uh, let us know a little bit about yourself. <laughs> well, uh, my name's Jeff. Uh, I'm the leader of the uh, Dark Side Phil fan club, as mm. you probably tell. Uh, I'm probably his greatest fan of all time. I started watching his videos back in 2010. Uh, I made a video claiming that he was dead. And for some reason, Phil freaked out, made a video saying that he was not dead, or a uh, comment saying that he was not dead for some reason. So I said that uh, I beat him in Street Fighter, which is true, and then he started denying that too. And uh, from there on out, I've just been taking stabs at him, and he's been going crazy. Like, for example, when he spent 15 minutes making a, a Christmas tree, uh, or decorating a Christmas tree, and it was supposed to be a nice happy time, and he ended up bitching about me the entire time, and then said my name by name <laughs> later on so so what uh, what stood out to you like what when you when you first realized that he existed when you first saw his quality content what immediately stood out to you <laughs> what what attracted you in a non-sexual way to this man well you said non-sexual so yeah I was well we'll cover that his... after they will do both all right his, his uh, fourth fat role was by far my my favorite part i i just like i've seen two i've seen three but never four. So, oh. you know, dark side Phil all the way that way. No, but what actually interested me about him was that he was this guy. And this is this is like way back in the day. Uh, and he he was just like creating content. They didn't really care about what he was doing. He was just putting content out there and just like like having fun with it. I was, and at the time, uh, I didn't really follow too many YouTubers or anything. I still don't to this day. But I was like, well, this guy's actually, you know, he might be a, a big idiot, but man, he's following his dreams and stuff like that. And then the more I looked, uh, I don't know, the abyss stared back at me, and now I am Dark Side Phil. So here I am now. Would it make you sad to know that nowadays uh, he's not really having as much fun? He's more uh, shackled by new releases, by fan requests. Uh, you know, it's not. It's not the same dark side Phil that you fell in love with. Yeah, uh, no, you're you're absolutely right. Uh, over the years, I definitely did kind of back off from it as well. Uh, I see a lot of people on Twitter have been covering that uh, pretty well, especially with the This Is How You Don't Play series and stuff like that. Um, but um, yeah, it sucks that he is no longer really he, he's. He's kind of like a grumpy old man. That's that. That's probably the a grumpy fat old man. <laughs> and and I I feel bad for him because he like you said he's shackled. He's he's kind of stuck doing all this stuff. And I I don't know, uh, you know. And then and, and then he he does terrible things to put himself even more in the holes. Like like oh I'm gonna cancel fan appreciation week so I could play this Bloodborne DLC that I'm not going to play. So. <laughs> like exactly. it's stuff like that it's just, it's it's just like a constant it's like a a sitcom really like following dark side phil's life is a sitcom you know over time it kind of gets old but you go back and you look at it and it's, it gets fun again you know you don't know how many times we hear that like um we've had different people on 
that we sort of like ask the same questions, right? I mean, we kind of want to get people's perspective on, you know, how they saw this guy and took the extra step to sort of uh, uh, make them a part of their life and, and, and find value in, uh, in his existence. And like the majority <laughs> of time they tell us, well, yeah, he's just, he's just such a unique, interesting person. It's, it's just like a source of inspiration. He's, uh, you know, this and that. And, uh, yeah, I, I think we found a consensus like that. He is a very unique person with some, uh, some, I don't know, just some very crazy well, antics is what we like to call them around here. The little fat engine that could. Yeah. There's yeah, always antics, legit. you know, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, uh, part of this, I think, um, and excuse me if I'm speaking out of turn, but I think part of it also, um, is, you know, you're, you're a fighting game player, uh, and you, you see Phil and his claim to fame and stuff like that. Uh, what do you, what do you feel about that? The way that he approaches fighting games, uh, did any of that ever factor into it? Um, the way, well, okay. So basically back in 2010, when I first started, really, I was kind of new as Street Fighter. Uh, I've like, my first Street Fighter was HD Remix. So I'm not, I wasn't really too versed in it. So when I saw that, he was like, oh yeah, I'm the best or whatever. And then I was just seeing things that were not like very fundamentally based at all from his videos. I'm like, what, what is going on here? Um, so I, the, the way that he talks about himself with fighting games and stuff like that, I don't feel like, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I don't really follow Phil that much anymore, but he, does he seem to like brag about his past still? Does he do that still? Like yes. being Evo champion for Neo Geo port of a PSX? Yes. He All does. the time. He does this still. Okay. Yeah. That's really weird. Like, um, because street fighter two was, there was a bunch of unfair shit in it, but uh, the very beginning of the match was super fundamental based, right? And in order for you to get that knockdown, you would have to really, really do something to screw up at that point. Uh, so it, it's really weird that someone that came from such a background just plays like complete ass, you know? But I've heard also other stories of him, like in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, he's not very good at that or something. So maybe it was just a fluke. I don't know. It was really weird to me. Um, but I, I'm sorry to answer your question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I think it's more of an enigma of just like, he, he's, he's the best in the, in the heyday, but then like nothing he does is really reflecting that at all. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, he's never wrong, I guess. I don't know. Now the dark side, Jeff persona, you got to tell us about this. Is that one of the most fun characters that you've done in your life um in my life okay um let's see uh yeah i guess i don't know um i think that dark side jeff persona probably cost me a number of girlfriends in the past <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't want the day like that. i'm surprised uh oh, never mind um but yeah no i have a lot of fun doing the dark side uh jeff persona it's mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a bastardization of him along with just like it's like basically I don't know if if you just do this in your own time and you, you you make a persona online and then you're just like you're never wrong and then everything that you see you can blame on anything else it's kind of liberating it's stupid and and if you're any sort of self aware it's absolutely stupid but it's fun as hell to do yeah so it's that and um my uh 60 year old video game review persona jeff wood uh <laughs> I, I feel like those two really really uh bring it together basically if you're ignorant and you don't have to pay attention to anything the world is telling you at all you could be the happiest most blissfully happy person in the world is mm -hmm. what i'm trying to say it's like the safe space yeah so i think that the uh dark side jeff thing i think that actually resonated with people really well i mean uh when you talk to people in this community, they probably would refer to you as Dark Side Jeff before they refer to you as Jeff the Hero. Um, I think that uh, I think that people really enjoyed that, and obviously, um, the time that you sort of came around, I think that you uh, brought this sort of parody and this attitude and this sort of fun-loving approach of him. Uh, to a good amount of people, so uh, I think that that's great, man. Honestly, I think. Thank that, you. I think that that's you know something that we're we're all striving for, right? I I noticed with you that uh, you keep it 
lighthearted and in good taste and in good humor. And that's what we're trying to do too. You know, I think that uh, from time to time we get a bad rap that some people will take things a little bit too far and sort of uh, poorly reflect on the entire community when uh, all we want to do is just have a good time, you know, have a good laugh um, and hang out. You know, I mean, okay. the community has sort of uh, changed, I think, uh, in the past few years to something that is like, I don't know, more welcoming, I guess, you know, more friendly, mm -hmm. more, more, uh, more like friend based. Right. So, no, I, I understand. Yeah, it's a, and, and it's... I, I completely understand what you mean by the people misinterpret the two things. Like I, I by far, a lot of people did not know Dark Side Jeff was a parody of Dark Side Phil, even though they're completely aware of Dark Side Phil. They just thought that it was the fanboy and some guy that was just screaming and throwing chicken off his uh, balcony or whatever the fuck. You know, <laughs> it's just like it's not what like it's. The people think that there really is a person out there that is that ridiculous, you know, day to day, and it just it doesn't make sense. So, mm -hmm. you were gonna say, Mogul? Oh, I was gonna say it's a it's a very laid back and welcoming, chill community. I guess you want to put it that way. We're very lucky. We're very lucky that uh, it sort of happened organically. You know, um, I, I I've said this before. Like I I think it's like this this weird sort of. Uh, social experiment uh sort of in progress where people are um sort of like they 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 sort of give this sort of like parody and like these little pot shots and jokes and all this different stuff they give it to phil and then people just they're just cool towards each other like they get it all out and then <laughs> they're just like happy to be around each other and uh you know, they they tucker themselves out with all the other stuff. I don't know. Could be could be just hippie stuff, but I don't know. Um, all right, so we kind of covered uh, the stuff in the past, what people know you for, and and uh, how all this came to be. Uh, so let's sort of bring it into the present. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, or any sort of curiosities. I, I noticed that you've uh, started doing a little bit of stuff on Twitter here and there, making a, a few jokes here and there, but I, I have to imagine that you have to be a little bit out of the loop. So is there anything maybe that you're curious about um, before we start to talk about some uh, some stories that happened recently since our last podcast? Oh, I don't know. I do like jokes. Um, I, I, I don't know. Dark Side Phil's, uh, I, I, I haven't been paying attention lately. Uh, you guys have briefed me before the podcast on a few things. I think I'm, I'm pretty up there. I know he has a Patreon. I know that, like, people keep, like, donating money to pull it back the last second, and then, like, everyone laughs at him whenever he's, like, all miserable from it. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know other from that. That's that's pretty much as, as updated as I am right here. All right. So let's start with something that broke almost as soon as we wrapped, like very close um, to the end of the last podcast. And that is the news. And I want to be completely sincere and genuine when I say this. Happy news. Fantastic news. Ladies and gentlemen, we can all eat crow. We're eating our words. Leanna Pandali has a job <laughs> didn't see that coming <laughs> <laughs> something that i never thought that i would see in all sincerity i never thought i would see this i'm completely surprised by this i saw it on twitter then i had to go uh look at something basically the way that this came about was uh she had posted a tweet with a picture of herself dressed uh, fairly nicely, you know, wearing like a nice business <laughs> casual uh, whatever. And uh, she she talked about she loves her new co-workers. And she's working hard on a, on a Black Friday. And uh, I thought that this is an opportunity for us to be fair, right? I mean, we, we, uh, we like to point out when things are fucked up. I think that it would be fair to point out when things go right, they she got it right this time. Things are not going well in the Burnell household financially, and she 
got up off her ass and did something about it. And she's bringing, we don't know, obviously, what the extent of the job is. We don't know what the job is. And frankly, we don't want to know. I mean, if people go out and find it out, whatever, we're not going to stop people or tell people not to. But our attitude is, you know, this is sort of outside the internet. This is her personal life. This is her actually going out and doing something positive. So, you know, we don't really care where she's working or, oh, we're going to prank call her work or something like that. That stuff, you know, it, that's not really what we're looking for. Uh, but what I want to do is, again, publicly acknowledge Pandali getting a job. Congratulations, Leanna. I mean that sincerely. You took the initiative. You went out. You did what you needed to do. You're contributing to the household. You're making the best of a bad situation. Kudos to you, and I wish you the best. Oh, she's no longer part of the 40s. That's good. And, you know, um, I I just, you know, a lot of people were surprised by this. I saw a lot of people asking us about it. I think on our Google Doc, there's a couple questions about it. Um, so, yeah. Any other thoughts on Leanna getting a job? Any other congratulations to dole out? I personally, I think it's great. But the one thing that makes me laugh is how Phil is almost hiding it. Like, he wouldn't say where she was for the longest time. Is he even acknowledging it now? Uh... Not that I know of. He keeps referring to it as like she's out <clears throat> and she'll be back later. <laughs> like, and then what's what's he do while she's at work? He waits for her to get home so she can cook dinner. So she can cook yep. dinner. What a <laughs> fucking <laughs> slob. When she's sick, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. Oh, okay, okay, you stupid bitch. I know you're. I know you're. <laughs> I, I know you just got home from work and all, but I'm fucking hungry. So you need to <laughs> get in that fucking kitchen and feed me something, okay? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be something if somehow her getting a job is a bigger betrayal than if she cheated on him? I could see it. You get all jealous. How dare you? I'm pretty sure Phil's in the NTR, so it's fine. He needs the money. Yeah. He's broke as fuck, and they all need the money. So, yeah, it's weird that he's not acknowledging it. I, I, I think that would be sort of a, an acknowledgement of failure as a man, no, that... You know, think about this. All right. Really think about this. OK, Black Friday, busiest shopping day of the year. I would just guess that maybe she's doing something where she's working with the public retail or something of that sort. And she's working on the busiest day, Friday, uh, Black Friday. And what is Phil doing? Phil is OK. Siri reacted to that. Uh, <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil is at home drinking and doing a fallout four marathon not even really drinking he had what a drink and a half and claimed he was drunk oh yeah. and wait we can't forget the the chocolates with liquor in them or the notification so all right let's <laughs> let's also explain this so uh he claimed that this was going to be the super drunk shenanigans uh stream that harkens back to his old days um but then he started getting spammed with some uh xbox one party invites and he sobered up like that like immediately all the shenanigans were done and was like all right ladies and gentlemen we're gonna pause the stream we got to figure out how we're gonna fucking do this and we could sit here all day okay you guys are gonna fucking tell me how i do this because this shit console i mean it took away all the features people like all the features people want to be like non-social with people that's what the features that they liked like to not interact with other human beings you see, uh, Phil, Phil, you Phil, say Phil, that. Phil speaks for everybody. He is, he, he is, he is, he is the average Joe gamer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I would be fine with questioning, uh, the legitimacy of his super drunk stream. Uh, just kind of seemed like he wanted to, uh, get some more attention because he's kind of stuck right now, right? Like he's kind of in a in a position where uh, he has to keep playing Fallout 4 so he can get done with it, and it's really the only thing that's constantly putting out views for him. But even that's declining, and he's got to find a way to put a spin on it. So it seemed like the drunk stream, the hearkening back to the old days, that was the best way to go about it, and I think he kind of embellished it a bit. And he was drinking Bacardi. The fuck is that? I thought Phil is a gin man. I thought he's Tangeray all the way. 
I have to, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nonsense. So, anyways, that covers the uh, the Leanna getting a job thing again. Congratulations, Leanna. Moving on, something. Uh, I mean, this is pretty controversial. There's people that like want to not acknowledge this at all. There's people that want to acknowledge it to high heaven. I guess we'll just sort of mention it and give maybe our takes and our takeaways. Uh, I think you know what I'm going to mention. The, uh, the John Rambo and Howard uh, podcast, I guess it was. Um, 90 minutes where they address what Phil said. Uh, if you guys don't remember what Phil did, he had an Ask the King episode. He was asked, what's going on with Rambo? What's going on with your friendship? And he essentially went on... Eh, about a 10 minute answer where uh, he said that he has no idea and he didn't do anything and if you're a man you're gonna actually talk out your problems and not resent each other and stop talking and that was sent to both of them and they actually made a response we were actually surprised Huh, guys, like, when we saw that, my, my jaw was on the floor. Did you guys actually think that they were going to do this, go that far and respond? I was uh, shocked. I, I was not expecting that at all. Like, I didn't even think they were watching that to really be able to give them a response. I was, or maybe someone messaged them or something, because I think John Rambo said something about that on the, in the response. But it was definitely not expecting that at all. No, I mean, but it's good to get clarification on what happened between them. So. Uh, how long were they out of the picture for? Because uh, I don't know that. Ever since he moved. Okay. That was, was like how long ago was that? Year? Uh, so last he moved year. in June of 2014. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Last year. Yeah. I'm okay. Sure. So, so what what exactly happened between them? Like uh, Phil didn't give them their machinima money or something. All right. So. Here is what is claimed. Again, we can't refer to any of this as fact. We have no reason to think that Rambo and them are lying. They have no reason to lie. But because there's no evidence on either side, we just have to say that this is claimed and we can't just like throw our weight and say that this is absolute fact. So let's make sure that's clear so that we don't hear about it after the fact. So this is what is alleged based on the video. Mr. Phil and Mr. Rambo had an arrangement where they would do co-op streams together Phil would take the monthly revenue that those specific co-op videos would make, he would cut that in half, and he would split it with John Rambo. A little bit uh, later on into that uh, co-op arrangement, Phil claimed that he was no longer getting reports from Machinima, so he wasn't able to calculate what would be half of that monthly revenue. So Rambo made a compromise with him that he would just pay him $100 for a visit that would be covering excuse me his uh you know any sort of like meal or wear and tear on the car he claimed uh gas you know that kind of stuff and essentially the way that rambo put it is that he wasn't really profiting at this point he was just sort of doing these uh for fun he said that he was helping phil a lot uh because of his back injury he was driving him around and uh you know just just being a really good friend for him whenever he'd visit uh so that's that's essentially what happened with that business relationship, as Rambo puts it. Uh, Phil obviously has not done a response, so we can't get his side. But he said for I don't know how long that he and Rambo were doing 50-50 at all times. Cool. Okay. I was just wondering. I, I had no idea about that. Yeah. So Rambo was like very... I don't want to say adamant, but he was very deliberate to make sure that he communicated to people that there was not uh, a 50-50 uh, split like was claimed. Uh, he then went on to talk about Project 7, and I think this is the one that really upset people. Um, as you guys know, Phil originally did some Project 7 videos by himself, sort of standing in front of a uh, camera, put a t-shirt on his face, did very minimal efforts no real special effects you know uh <laughs> you guys remember the let's endure project seven the uh the original stuff was not very good uh howard who was really like 
he really shined on that one. He was very upset, very animated. Uh, and I can understand if what he says is correct, why he would be. Uh, but Howard claims that respect the pact, the people that did most of the editing, all of it actually, the special effects, all that kind of stuff, they were childhood friends of his. They wanted to do a project with him. They decided, hey, let's get our buddy Phil involved in this. And that was the genesis of Project 7. They uh, start to put in a heavy amount of editing and work into it. And one of them, I forget if they mentioned by name which one, um, but one of the brothers of Respect the Pact has, uh, has a child. So obviously he's got some different priorities that he needs to take care of and put forward. So he couldn't exactly put as much into Project 7 as he was before. And uh, Rambo, trying to sort of... Uh, politic be a diplomat between the two approached phil and said hey maybe you should throw them some money maybe uh you know everyone is supposed to make one fifth of this there's five people involved uh rambo howard phil and the two from respect the pact give them their percentage give them two fifths for the two of them and phil claimed according to howard that they didn't want money and Howard then followed up with Respect the Pact, and they claimed that that conversation never took place, and uh, there was never a situation where uh, there was a conversation about money. Then... They got Gugats. They got Gugats. Uh, after that, Howard describes them going over to visit Phil and seeing a BMW in his driveway, and them getting kind of burned by that. Um, the last piece of the story with Project 7 is that uh, Rambo was uh, having car issues. Uh, I think his car, he described it as completely broke down. So he reached out to Phil and said, hey, um, you know, my car broke down. I can't come out to visit you anymore. So, you know, I'm sorry we can't do co-op anymore or any of that kind of stuff. Um, if, you, if you give me my percentage from Project 7, my, my 20%, then I could repair my car or get a new car and, you know, we can continue on. At that point, Phil paid him. Uh, but John Rambo was the only person to get paid 20%, as Rambo claims, and uh, Phil made 80% of what happened from Project 7. He's even more of a scumbag than, you act than people actually thought. He's a coward and a scumbag and a con man. He is all of the things that people should hate, and I can't believe that there's people stupid enough to give him money every month. It really annoys me. But one thing that I wanted to bring up during that uh, the Rambo and Howard podcast is how Howard complained about Phil monetizing videos about uh, the passing away of his friend. I mean, <clears throat> the fact that Phil did that really shows his true colors and what kind of person he really is. Yes. Uh, so... Essentially, um, it was about uh, Scott, right? They were very upset. Obviously, T was a separate thing. That's when Phil was talking about like beating people up and shit. But um, Scott was uh, a friend of theirs, uh, someone that was very well known uh, from the Connecticut area um, of Street Fighter players. And uh, apparently, Phil, mon I don't remember that. I don't remember seeing those videos specifically, so I can't speak to those Um but that was one of their issues that they talked about. Um, am I missing anything else from the video that... Oh, um, so the other thing that uh, Rambo was kind of upset about is that Phil seemed... And this is, again, alleged by Rambo. I just want to cover my bases here. Um, Phil seemed as though the only communications that he had with them was in route to making some sort of video. Uh, so Rambo talks about, like, Phil... And Howard would get, like, drunk text messages at, like, 5 a.m. and stuff, their time. And it would just be, like, incoherent stuff. And Phil would, like, ask them how they're doing and then immediately after transition to, like, oh, so when are we going to do some videos and stuff like that. And they felt as though uh, Phil was just sort of trying to, um, I wouldn't say use them, but just sort of interested in interacting with them. Uh, in order to do like co-op videos and stuff like that. So, 
those are those are like the big ones um, that I can remember off the top of my head. And um, there's a lot of people up in arms. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me let me read you. Uh, this is another piece of uh, I don't want to know news, but this is uh, something else that I wanted to bring up with you guys. Uh, here is a post by Wang Lord titled "I'm Done." Uh, do you remember Wang Lord by any chance, Jeff? Uh, no, not at all. Okay, he, he used to be around for a while. Um, all right, so here is uh, here's the post. Here, this is uh, Saturday, around. Uh, let's see, it was at night. We'll uh, leave it at that. Not gonna be posting on the forums anymore. The community has become a husk of what it once was, and the newest revelations about Phil, which I won't mention here, was the icing on the cake for me. Been part of this community for five plus years, but there's nothing left for me here anymore. And then he shouts out uh, former mods, current mods. It says that uh, they are part of a once great community. He apologizes if he forgot anybody. And says, see you around. So, long time member, community member, moderator, former moderator. Jeez. Uh, uh, I think it's nice that he grew up. That's nice. That's, that's good. You know, fly away, butterfly. And, uh, you know, make babies and all that. It's good. He, I'm going to give him credit just in terms of uh, his intentions. He tried very hard to walk a line between giving Phil criticism and trying to genuinely help him. Uh, I feel like when he was trying to give criticism, he would do it in a way that was uh, going to benefit Phil at the end of the day. Uh, he said some things about us, but, you know, we've said some things about him. So, uh, you know, there's not really any hard feelings there. And, uh yeah, wish him the best. You know, it, it sucks to see somebody that um, disenfranchised from a community that they were once part of and uh, to see that it was uh, at least in part due to um, revelations about Phil. Uh, it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks that somebody is uh, taking leave from a community that they'd enjoyed being part of. So best of luck to Wanglord. And uh, yeah, we were actually going to have him on the podcast a few weeks ago. But uh, that ended up falling through. So, best of luck to him. Um, one Bye, more. Th- <laughs> oh, sorry. What? <laughs> That's cool. One more thing that I want to um, bring up. Let me see if I can give Moogle, our resident streamer here, a copy of this screen cap because we actually got oh. a very candid response out of Mr. Phil on uh, sure. if Pass he would actually. If he would actually respond to this whole Rambo nonsense. All right, here is sending this to Moogle now. Uh, where's Moogle? There we go. All right, so that should be sending. Um, so again, we have uh, we have been uh, bestowed upon this fantastic patrons-only exclusive uh, post from the forum. Something that that kind of should be public but i don't know i guess phil feels extra honest to people that pay five dollars or more for this well, special see, section you see fred that's classified mm. so uh just let me know when you get it on screen and we'll uh we'll go over it yeah i'm just getting it now all right uh, <clears throat> This picture I saved, and it is right here. Perfect. And bam. All right. So as you can see, uh, of course, by the looks of this post, it was definitely submitted to us by Phil himself. Uh, all right. Let me just—I uh, don't know. Should I read it or should I just sort of gloss over it? I feel like I've been talking a lot. Uh, I can't see it, so feel free to read just it. Gloss over it. I'll, uh, actually, I'll drop it in our chat, too. That'll help people out. Um, But essentially, what Phil is saying here is that there's no reason for him to respond because regardless of what he'll do, he'll be made out as the villain. He claims that hundreds of people who regularly watched his stuff have made it publicly known that they will not anymore. And others are even joining the quote-unquote detractor movement. You hear that, Jeff? I had nothing to do with this. Pastors uh... joining the detractor movement, the fan club. Jeff, can you can you believe this? I'm a uh, uh, I'm reading it right now. And, it's disgusting. Uh, it it is appalling. 
I've, I don't know what to say right now. Hold on. <laughs> I'll let you take it all in. Uh, Phil claims that they expect gameplay and entertaining vlogs from him, but they don't expect drama. And the only time that he ever talks about drama is when it pertains to his business, like why he can't stream because he gets false copyright claims. Mr. Fresh, I need to do some back and forth with you on this one. We talked about this numerous times, I believe even here on the show. Um, drama is one of his biggest selling points at this point. Yeah, his videos are what makes him his views. For him, him to say, oh, I don't want drama on my channel, he's going to be hurting his channel because that video, if he would have made a video response to John and – John and – Oh yeah, John and Howard. Howard. I forget yeah. forgetting their names. Um, he would get tons of views on it, tons and tons. Probably one of his most viewed videos uh, since the swatting incident. So him not wanting to do it, whatever. It just shows that he's a coward because everyone believes Howard and uh, Rambo anyway. So it's not going to do anything other than make him look like a giant liar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just to play devil's advocate, um, I feel in a weird way that um i think there was no good move for him i think that both would have been negative if he doesn't respond it looks like there is no response um although there is the benefit of i wouldn't even say being a bigger man like I, he didn't really have a card to play did he i mean what's he gonna do is he no. gonna call them liars you know like is he gonna do exactly what they said he was gonna do by monetizing a drama video uh he claimed they claimed that uh, he's always trying to find new ways to monetize them. This would be the newest way. Mm -hmm. You know what? I actually think he would have released that video had Howard not reached out to him. Hmm. I think that that was the breaking point. Hmm. I think that's when he realized he's like, I'm going to play in. Because how many people tweeted him? All of the detractors, everyone said, don't make a video, call them. Well, and he guys, was going to. If you remember, he tweeted out that he was specifically going to right before yep. he went down, right before he sat down to record the weekend preview. Yeah. He was going to – he said he was going to do two. He was going to do the weekend preview, and he was going to address all the bullshit drama. So he, was, yeah, he and then, was strapped up to do it. Yeah, and I think that Howard sending that message really kind of maybe shocked him out of doing it. And now maybe he sat back and thought about it and realized that there's no good way for him to respond because there is no good way for him to respond. Anything that he puts out is going to make him – look even worse than it does already right and even to concede to one of their points they didn't really make any sort of ancillary points right nothing they said was was uh useless everything was a loaded gun you know what i mean like every single point that they made was something significant something that um was sort of eating away not eating away but something that sort of irked them i'd say would be fair and mm -hmm. uh these are all you know pretty significant gripes like I, I i respect the fact that they didn't really do anything petty um they addressed recurring themes claims that he'd made over the years you know um so i think they were pushed i think they were pushed to a point of where they said we have to say something now because otherwise they look silly mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happened when he did his weekend what was it ask the king right where he addressed them i think that was their breaking point and they got together and said hey we have to defend ourselves and show people who he really is. And uh, just to address Austin Austin Bastard in chat, uh, when he said he doesn't see uh, tweets from the detractors, he does. He Unless you're blocked, he's reading your tweets. Hmm. Because I would tweet him personally for the longest time, and I'm like, okay, he has me muted. There's no way he's watching these. And then a week ago, he blocked me. Not to mention, so, like, uh, if one of his fanboys, like, uh, uh, <laughs> I won't mention anyone by name, but if one of his fanboys were to respond to you, he would see them, and then he would see the tweet chain. Mm -hmm. uh, if people... I think he's too vain. He's too vain. He likes it. He likes knowing that people are talking about him. So I don't think, unless you're blocked, I think he's probably reading your tweets. Yeah. Well, we know for a fact, we proved that Panda Lee actually searches for herself because a lot of us had uh, tweets that don't actually at tag her in, like tag her tweet or Twitter handle in, and she actually tracks them down and responds to them. Uh, so I believe, uh, at the very least, we've we've demonstrated that Panda Lee will like search herself, and uh, in addition to like the takedown notices she's done and stuff like that. So um, I feel like they do sort of partake in the uh, in the antics themselves. It's too much fun. They they have to you know they have to do it too. They have to get a piece. So, anyways, one um, one 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 thing though. That's good. Uh, 
the, the whole thing with uh, Howard and all, I don't think that he was ever expecting them to actually respond because oh, no. usually John and Howard don't get involved in this sort of thing. But I guess Phil learned that people will defend themselves when it comes to this sort of thing, especially if, you know, en enough has been said about them. That was a dark, dark day in the Burnell household. Can so you imagine when you first coming learned... out or what? Project okay, well, let's uh, let's get you up to date on that one, my friend. So, if you uh, if you don't know, and for anyone else that may not know, if you're new, hi. Um, essentially, Phil made his Patreon uh, back at the beginning of this year, 2015, and one of the major selling points was Project Seven. If you give him 1250. Uh, sorry, not twelve fifty. If you give him uh, seventy five dollars as a donation in one calendar month, you earn yourself a role in Project Seven. You can either record something and send it in. You can be part of Project Seven in some sort of way. For uh, originally it was forty, but then dropped down to thirty. You can get Project Seven T shirts, which in the description, even as of a few days ago, because he had a forum post that he addressed that oops, that's an oversight. As of just a few days ago. His Patreon still described his Project 7 shirts as being relevant because the series will be rebooted soon. And in the month of... Shit. Was it uh, August? <laughs> Project 7 being relevant. <laughs> yeah, it was August. August. In the month of August, he created a milestone goal. Mr. Jeff, you give him 1250 and I know you probably were itching to do that. I'm, I should have sent you a tweet, maybe let you know. Maybe you could have yeah, kicked, yeah. Well, kicked a few dollars his way. Uh, there's still time though. You can you can donate this month, Jeff. Yeah, I'll uh, yeah, I'll. I'm gonna hold you to it. Um... I'll have to look at my bank account. <laughs> twelve dollars, hard. Come by. <laughs> but all right, so uh, for twelve hundred and fifty dollars, one thousand two hundred fifty dollars U.S., you pay for him to take some time to create something towards Project Seven. Now, originally it was very vague. I'm gonna create something. Then, as the weeks went on, and he actually was uh, funded that amount and was sort of obliged, uh, obligated to actually do it, he then started to lower expectations. Well, I, I just want to put out something. I, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff going on. I just have to do something. That month, he was doing a lot of polls. What do you want me to see? What do you want to see me play? He was playing Fallout New Vegas on Survivor difficulty. Or sorry, what was it? Uh, what is that? Hardcore mode. Playing New Vegas on hardcore mode, playing Just Cause 2, playing a different, uh, a lot of different older games. He then claimed, at the end of August, Jeff, mm. that he is canceling Project 7. He was originally going to make a teaser trailer to show his progress of Project 7 and get the whole damn thing rebooted like he said he would, like his whole Patreon was based around, and he postponed it indefinitely so that he can focus on raw gameplay. Hey. What? So. Oh, okay. That is the current status of Project 7. It is indefinitely postponed, but it might happen. You never know. Another thing that was a big factor is that he is trying to raise uh in in total two thousand um, dollars but as of now it's like 1650 since he lowered it because he raised some uh he's trying yeah. to buy himself a camera oh yeah the camera yeah didn't that get canceled or something well just recently it got canceled uh he says oh. that uh because of all the bullshit copyright and the fact that he doesn't show up in search results anymore which is in large part we feel <laughs> Jeff, you, you know about YouTube, and Mr. Fresh, you know uh, a good amount about YouTube, too. I do know about search engine optimization, yes. It's a part of my uh, new job, yes. What would happen if you were to remove the related channels box off of your channel? I'm sorry, say that one more time? If you were to remove the related channels box off of your channel page, you know how um, oh, right, yeah. you oh, have related you channels? You get taken off, too, yeah. Right. Uh, in fact, if you do that, it even gives you a nice little warning that it says it's going to do that. Um, which so it's not even a secret. It's not like one of the SEO top secret little like out of clauses or anything like that. It, it literally says it like right there in front of you. So, well, unfortunately, because people like me, 
Evil AJ, the Sons of Kojima in general, were actually popping up in that box. He didn't want to share in the fun, even though he was popping up in our boxes and, you know, we, we were cool about it. You know, we're like, it's fine. We'll, we'll help him out. Uh, he decided to actually remove that box. And we feel as though that actually uh, contributed to some of his uh, search result. Um, I don't even know what to call it. Like, uh, his, his, yeah, no, his, he's not optimized anymore, basically, because right. like he's not playing ball. So, guess what happens to you? You know, it's, it's, it's give and take, basically, you know, right. So, um, because of that, he blamed it on false copyright. Uh, here's something else that happened. Um, two people, uh, copyrighted his videos for fan art. They were not, uh, happy with the way that he was doing things anymore. They did not want to continue their business relationship with him anymore. Um, so they decided to take back control of their artwork and they actually uh, did a copyright claim the same way that he did copyright claims on people for this is how you don't plays and other sort of stuff like that. And um, he ended up in defense of himself, uh, to defend himself, sorry, he ended up deleting millions of views worth of videos from his channel all in one day. Um, I'm sure that has nothing to do with his channel being less popular. Really? No, no, that was that was a joke. Um, no, uh, that's that's a lot to do with it. Uh, being that your your videos are no longer bouncing against each other because they no longer exist, uh, that's a huge thing. Uh, but as a positive thing, uh, my heart was broken hearing this, so I went on my channel and I, I added uh, Dark Side Phil to my little uh, toolbar to the right there. So you know, hmm. it's a uh, I fixed it. I fixed it all. So those are the two things that uh, contributed to that. Anyways, uh, I claimed that he didn't want to uh, put himself in a financial position where he would be promising that he would get a uh, a camera if he can't afford it. So the camera goal is now also null and void. And I, I feel, and a lot of other people feel, that's a big part of Project 7 not being uh, followed up on either. So. Hey, well, that's all right. Um, you know, like, he's got a lot of things looking forward to, like his next birthday and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, keep it positive. Yeah. Yep. So I think that that's that. I think uh, somebody in the chat was like, oh, is this the update Jeff on DSP edition? Um, I don't know. I figured it was relevant to the conversation. Thought we'd get our good friend Jeff here up to speed so that he can. Uh... Yeah. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, so. Let's see what other uh, what other topics do we got? Does anyone else want to uh, chime in on anything that we addressed prior before I look at these viewer submitted topics? Beautiful. All right, let's have a look. See. Uh, all right, here's a good one. Um, let's say this is submitted by Bring Me the Head Uber Fan. Let's say that Phil's new channel is denied managed partnership status. Do you think he'll blame Machinima as he did on Twitch? By stymieing positive growth and handicapping his business. On the flip side, let's say his new channel is approved, but the videos fail to attract any significant interest. How long until he resorts to emotionally blackmailing his timid fan base into viewing them? Again, submitted by Bring Me the Head Uber Fan. Let's have somebody I like feel imagining this one. <laughs> Phil scaring people by being sad on the internet. That's uh... oh, but he has. It's <laughs> pretty fucking good. <laughs> Uh, what, what what can he say to intimidate like his viewers? Like what? Don't you remember when he told people he was gonna beat the shit out of them for claim for giving him shit for monetizing a video about his dead friend? He would fucking have a heart attack before he gets one fist out. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then there's also, please don't take my videos for granted. If you, if if you could just donate a dollar a day, at the Patriot. And then watch my fucking videos, that I that I won't have to worry about it anymore. Jeff, you missed an incredible month where he was just down in the dumps, beside himself, trying to just get people to watch his stuff. He developed the catchphrase: "If everyone would just donate a dollar a day, I wouldn't have to worry about views at all." It was like a PBS drive. You know when you tune in? Yeah, into... no, Sarah McLaughlin thing. Yeah, when yeah. the little animals or whatever, you know, the ones beaten up and missing an eye and all that. That's, yeah. uh, that's Phil right now. That's there cool. Was, all right. He, he showed, like, Panda Lee with an empty plate, you know, and it was it was really sad. <laughs> I cried. Um, 
But uh, but anyways, so this question is referencing Phil's third channel. In case you guys don't know, Phil wants to create a third channel that is going to primarily consist of edited videos, montage style videos, and he wants Machinima to give him manage partnership status so that he doesn't have to worry about copyright, content ID, yada yada. This all being a big risk. Um, so if he's denied that, the question is if he's going to try to, uh, you know, if he's going to give it the Twitch treatment where he says that Machinima sucks and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Let's get somebody else to talk. I feel like I've been talking a lot. Mr. Uh, Ghost Dragon, what do you think about that? Oh, um, whew. I think it's, has he, I don't see how he's going to differentiate himself from what he's doing now as far as name, because I know he's like hung up on naming it something that has <laughs> nothing to do with Dark Side Phil. Mm -hmm. But I mean, everything about him is pretty distinctive, so as soon as somebody sees the video, they're going to know it's him. But I think he's going to be in for a world of surprise, because what's his leveraging chip? He can't, he's got nothing that he can like use to try to convince Machinima that this is a good idea. His channel's failing now. He's he's even said that he makes more money than what Machinima's bring or than what his videos bring Machinima. So I don't see there's nothing he can bring to the table as far as I'm concerned in a negotiation like this. That is true. Um just I, I don't I don't quite understand. Did did he ever have any bargaining chips or anything like that? I thought he was just a YouTuber, you know, like, like I mean maybe a few years ago when he was sort of popular. But I mean now I don't I think Wait, we're just are we end talking up... about bargaining chips with his viewer base or machinima? With machinima. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Um so yeah, with machinima, that's like they don't really are they're not losing much to be honest i mean i know machinima itself is not doing that hot but I, phil is honestly chipping the paint you know it's not i i don't think like that's cool that he's he's I, what i'm trying to say here is basically like people like phil i don't know they're kind of like a, a dime a dozen from what i've seen like there's tons and tons of like other people that have done what he does and, and made it a lot further you know what i mean mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um in fact i was really surprised before this chat we were talking about just how much money he makes it's just it's amazing i guess if, if you the the formula for for being able to get out there and, and be popular is basically just go out there make sure you get the game early and just just like make sure you get those in, initial views you know, and uh, the custom thumbnails, of course, and all that stuff. But <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that this, this, I don't think, like, even if he had any sort of bargaining power or something before, I, I don't think he really has that sort of thing now, you know? No, that's what he, he does. He doesn't have anything to offer them, is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I don't see how he thinks he's going to convince them to give him a managed partnership on a new channel. Yeah. Machinima holds all the all the bargaining chips. If rea in reality, I mean, they right. could easily just say, "We don't want you anymore." He's not exactly getting the views like he had in the past, so he's he's expendable if you really think about it. Oh yeah, and for all we know, after this month, everything might change on his current channel. That's true. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that he's necessarily just going to get outright dropped. Um, I feel as though they may renegotiate the terms of his contract one of the big things and again um you know we we still don't exactly know how feasible this claim is um maybe if we can get some more discussion on this phil has claimed time and time again that his channel does not generate as much money in ads as he gets paid he gets paid more than his channel makes um and he touts the fact that he has a leg excuse me, he calls it a legacy contract. He says that he's paid strictly on the amount of views. There's no, uh, there's no calculation as to how many ads were watched or, uh, you know, anything like that. It's just purely, you made this amount of views this month. We give you this amount of money in response. Um, I feel as though if that is true, 
that would be the thing that would be changed. I think that they would put him on the newer contract. I was I was told that uh, when people were renegotiating off of these quote-unquote legacy contracts, um, it was presented to them as you'll make more money on this new style of contract that is based on ads um, than you would on the view model. And that might explain why his CPM is so low. Um, is that something realistic that Machinima would have somebody, uh, especially with managed partner benefits, that is making less money in ad revenue generated than what they're actually getting paid each month? I question the legitimacy of that claim. What business would take a loss for hmm. someone like DSP? Yeah, well, no, I mean, not, not even someone like DSP, but what business would take a loss, period, for an extended period of time? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, unless they were, Phil was just like, I'm going to leave and I have this lined up for me and stuff like that. There, there's no, um, There's no reason for them to switch to another model that would uh potentially make them lose more unless it was some sort of overall change you know because like i said phil's not like a huge part of machinima or anything you know they have a lot of really big guys out there i don't even think they have them on the website or like anything like that who would who would feature (laughs) phil burnell on their website come on god that's ridiculous but like uh, you think about machinima like let's say they were losing money let's they're his contract auto renews every year so the first time they get a chance to try to get him out they will they're not going to keep losing money for him no business will like what does he bring to the table there's nothing there's nothing that makes him unique or gives him any sort of power over everything i would say a good 60 percent of people maybe even 75 percent of people that watch him think he's a joke well, it so, could be like falling underneath the cracks or something. Like every single year, or whatever, they're just renewing it just to just to renew it, you know. Or yeah. maybe they they had a lot of backlash from trying to switch from legacy to new. Um, so uh, I mean, with other people, you know. So I like there. There's a number of things I could go wrong there. Right. I think that what we talked about, Fred, about how Machinima seems to be giving him more stuff. Yeah. Recently is. It, like indicative of what's going to happen. I think that the they're gold- trying to get him a boost in views, and if it doesn't happen, that's it. The golden parachute. Uh huh. That's it. Hey, we tried. Sorry, nothing happened. Your views were too low. We got to let you go. You know, and uh, I don't know if you know this. Um, this is actually something that uh, we were going to mention here on the podcast. Anyway, uh, he got Rainbow Six Siege for free from Machinima. So chalk that up to another brand new release um, that he received free from Machinima. Um, this is new. If you guys remember, uh, Phil talked shit heavily on people that get review copies, people that get advanced copies. You guys remember he got an advanced copy of Fallout 4, but still didn't play it until the embargo was lifted for some reason. Um, He also received Talos Principle. He received... uh, Didn't he receive Star Wars Battlefront? Star Wars Battlefront. Um, Yeah, for the Xbox. Yeah, I think he did. And Rock Band, so... Yeah, you know, like a bunch of fucking games. What'd you say, Nomad? Did you get the Uncharted collection? He got the Uncharted collection as a freebie this week as well. So he has been really racking in some free stuff. And if you guys remember throughout his whole career, not only did he not get these things, but he even talked shit about them because I think he was pretty fucking, uh, you know, uh, convinced that he probably wouldn't ever get these things. Um, then all of a sudden, uh, in these past few months, when he has been doing the worst that he's ever been doing, now all of a sudden Machinima's uh, sort of giving him a helping hand. I don't know, man. Uh, what do you think he, about He this? got a free uh, rock band guitar that he, uh, he later on held behind like a $1,200 paywall, right? Yes. Yep. That's funny. He That's... wasn't going to play it unless he received 1250 and he's been recently, quote unquote, sticking to his gun. So if he were to make... 1200 uh he wouldn't have done the um he wouldn't have done the marathon he needed exactly 1250 or above after taxes and fees mind you um for him to actually use this free um guitar that was sent to him so um but i don't know man it's it, it is it seems reasonable that if they are thinking about um maybe not completely severing the business relationship but at least 
um, renegotiating them in a way that it's going to be life changing. And I think they realize that, um, that they would try their best to get him kickstarted. Uh, maybe that's the wrong term. Uh, try their best to get, you know, a boost in views, uh, like fresh said before they actually did, uh, that renegotiation and sort of dropped the bomb on them. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, so there's that. Uh, let's see. What else we got in the viewer submitted doc? That again was a, a shit ton of mileage off of that. Um, I was looking on the forums for something too. Did I mention I was looking on the forums for something and then completely get sidetracked? Whatever. All right. I don't think. Uh, let's see here. That's a nice break. <laughs> That's a nice break what? in the action. Um, all right. How about this one? We're all well aware of DSP's e-begging antics. A dollar a month keeps the debts away. He now claims to be relying on free games from publishers as he can't afford to buy them for himself. He's desperately trying to pawn off his statues. And is there any need for me to explain his stance on views? My question is, do you really think he's short on cash? Someone pointed out, uh, someone pointed this out to him in a tweet recently. I couldn't find the tweet. To which he responded, whoever said I was broke? Was that just a knee-jerk reaction to save face submitted by Luna? Hmm. I, I've been saying this for a while, um, that I feel like he is hitting red alert well before uh, he's actually, like, feeling the sting of, you know, the declining business. But now, with the way that he's, like, shamelessly pushing Patreon, with the way that he's shamelessly pushing... Uh, his content to people and appealing to sympathy in a way for them to 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 watch them i don't know i i would i would assume that things are bad and and let's not forget liana did actually go out and get a job i don't think that i don't think that they expected that i don't think that was part of the deal old man all I know is if, if Phil were to go out and break more statues and replace the glasses with paper clips and be proud of it and make a 15-minute video about every single one, he'd probably be rolling in dough. Other from that, I have no input on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I. Sorry, go ahead. I know. I was just going to see if anyone else had... Uh, I was reading. Sorry. Go ahead, buddy. Um, I don't think he's... I think he's hard up for money to live the lifestyle he wants to live. I don't think he's like getting ready for food stamps broke, but I think to live within the kind of means he feels he deserves, then he's hurting. But I, I'm sure he could live a modest lifestyle, but we all know he just chooses not to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, it's funny. I was actually watching a video. Um, I think it was like his Christmas video and he's walking around his house and, like, you just notice certain things that um, convey to you that somebody is doing well. Like, you don't see, like, cheap furniture. You know, he opened up his – he's like, I need a battery. He opens up his junk drawer, and he's got, like, a 100 counts of all different batteries and stuff like that. Like, there's just, like, these these little things that, you know, you recognize as somebody that's doing fairly well, you know? Um, but – I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe that's why he's not doing well. Maybe maybe he is so set into a certain lifestyle that he needs to fuel that and therefore the money left over after fueling that isn't anything that you know, he can feel comfortable okay. with, you know. Yeah. And well, I mean, he's even said like he doesn't have like a plan or anything like that. So I don't think he has any foresight to saving money. He just he gets it and he's, before it's even cold in the bank. He's got it spent is the impression that I get from him. He just buys things on impulse, especially yeah. like even the most useless shit. And, like, he still buys it. They're both bad at it because why would she went out and bought Arkham Knight and he already had a copy? Why can't you just like walk over to his office, grab it? and play it for a little bit you know why would you shit like that that's just you're pissing away your money and then you just you can't sit there and complain that you have no money when you spend spend so uh frivolously mm -hmm. basically yeah. 
You ever notice? I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys didn't notice. Uh, I was in the credits for Batman Arkham Knight, and um, uh, when uh, when my name popped up over there, I, I noticed that he was like reading through the credits or whatever. And then he just saw that, and then he just stopped, and then he just went on to like something else that was just like completely irrelevant. <laughs> nice. I I don't I, know. I didn't notice. I'm gonna actually look back and and see what that's what that's. Yeah, about. that was it's pretty funny. That's pretty good. Um. <laughs> All right, here's a good one, uh, and I actually didn't notice this. I'm actually going to look into this while I read this question out and while we get a little bit of back and forth on this. Um, DSP's Rock Band stream is getting way more views than his normal videos. Will Phil notice and realize that longer videos are better for his business submitted by 2D2Will? I think the only thing that he is going to notice from that is that maybe he should put – the Rockathon towards, you know, another month of Patreon. Hmm. I mean, I'm really hoping that he doesn't because his singing was god-awful. Interesting. Let me uh, let me look at his channel. Let me see if that's true. I'm hearing rumblings that he's talking about making it a goal again. He is. Well, it, well it's funny because the way that he framed it was like, if the, if this does well, if you guys spread the word, then I'll do it again. But he didn't really put any detail as to like if that's like what does that even mean, you know? Um, let me see here. The Rock Band Marathon has fourteen thousand six hundred and seventy three views. Wow, that's that's crazy. That's good. Nice. That's fourteen thousand people whose ears have now bled. Yeah. Um, so that is in comparison to, um, let's just do something around the, t the same time frame and just sort of give that some perspective here. Um, even though I don't know if that'd be fair because some of these videos are pretty far in. Mm. Around that same time, he put out Just Cause 3. Okay, that's a launch game. That's fair. Um, so let's see. We got 5,000, 1,000, 2,000. Let me just sort of eyeball this real quick. 7, 6... 8, 10, 12. So, of all of the Just Cause 3 videos that he put out, he put out six parts um, that same day. Or, sorry, the next day. Um, and he's got about 14,000 on that. And that's from six parts of a launch day video. Whereas Rock Band, you know, is still a little bit older. So, that's very interesting. Um, and if you guys are familiar obviously that change in youtube is they're looking for engagement now um if people were to watch that seven hours all the way through although i'm not sure how you could with the fucking breaks and the pre-streams and all that stuff but uh if you were that would actually probably help him a lot more hmm i don't know what do you guys think you think he might sort of take a lesson from that and maybe make his videos longer I, I feel like uh, maybe you should uh, hire like some sort of professional analyst or something, uh, marketing analyst, um, to take a look mm -hmm. at his analytics and um, you know, give him some advice on that sort of end. He's kind of been doing this by himself for a while, and I feel like he deserves something else. <laughs> well, you said you dabble in SEO, right? Why don't you uh, why don't you hit him up? I know you could use uh, <laughs> yeah, some nice he, business. I, I, <laughs> Uh, his finger slipped one day. He accidentally blocked me on Twitter. So, um, you know, it's, it's been hard to get in touch with my old childhood friend here, but we'll see. Man, the, it would be like uh, you guys would reunite, you know? It would be fantastic. Dark Side Jeff and Dark Side Phil coming together to show the bright side of his potential business. I like how I claimed that I was originally the, the first Dark Side, and, and mm -hmm. people are starting to go around telling other people that, like, legitimately. So Very nice. Pretty nice. I feel like Phil's views, like, um, whenever he uploads a stream, if you just look, like, whenever you have his stream up, that shit has way more views than his actual videos. So, there's virtually no point on ever putting up separate parts from your live stream if that shit gets more views than your total of the videos that you would put out separately. So, I don't know, I, I just... Don't get that. Uh, well, he's looking for all. cumulative views. Like, if he just goes with just the stream, it's like he says, well, I will get the amount of views that I require to do with that. I just feel like it's redundant. 
like really redundant. There's no point in uploading the same video over and over again. People have seen it on stream already. I don't think people want to see it in a separate video itself. They would just watch the archive of the live stream. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. No, that's just me though. That's... He should have. He should, dude. Do you know how easy it would have been for him to just drop that in Premiere and just just crop out like the breaks and stuff and re-upload that? I think that would have been way more digestible, and I think people would have watched it all the way through. Yep. Or maybe he could put timestamps or something. I mean, like, do something, man. Come on. I mean, this is your job. Put well, something I mean, into editing? it. Who does that? I'm just well, saying, did you, man. He responded to somebody on Twitter, like, kind of suggesting that same thing about, or they said something about him spending 40 minutes in menus and going through the DLC. And he said something along the lines of, like, um, discovering, he was saying, like, something about, like, he was discovering what songs were available and, as a viewer, he would want to see that. So, I mean, he don't—he doesn't even have a fucking clue what people want to see. Well, it's funny you bring that up, Mr. Uh, Ghost Dragon, because, again, we've got uh, some fantastic patron-only exclusive. Huh? <laughs> nice segue. Oh, boy. It's funny you bring that up, Mr. Mogul, uh, if you would please. Uh, again, as you can tell by this fantastic uh, screen cap, once it makes its way on screen, this, of course, was sent to us. <laughs> Uh, this was, uh, of course, sent to us by Darkside Phil himself on the uh, illustrious forum. So um, there is a for there is a uh, thread on the King of Hate forums uh, patrons only section titled "Patrons Rock Band for Discussion." Isn't that a weird? <laughs> this is the patrons discussion of it. All right. Well, uh, it starts off with overwhelming praise, um, but then. A mentally ill detractor. Can you imagine this? <laughs> Get a load of this. A I'm fucking scumbag detractor. Uh, most respected patron, but I'm sure he lost all of his res all of the respect here. I don't understand why Phil is fucking around in tour mode. It's pretty stupid. He's limited to what songs he can play when he can just load up quick play and play any damn song he wants. Ooh, that's... He wanted trophies. That's why he played that. He wanted all the trophies. <laughs> Look, I'm a real gamer. Look at all my bronze trophies. Look at that shit, man. So, Phil then responds again. This is, uh, you know, you get you get your you get your honesty for five bucks a month. <laughs> Phil says, uh, quote, in response to that specifically, he says, quote, tour mode is considered the campaign of the game where you get to make choices, more money or more fans. I'm sure he'd love both. That lead to a new contract, or sorry, lead to a new contract. I don't know. I read that ridiculously. Sorry. Um, that lead to new content, as in new outfits, guitars, etc., and trophies slash progress. So there you go, Jeff. Damn. Hit the nail. You know this man better than you know yourself. Look at that. You knew it. Trophies. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know. Uh, <laughs> that was actually just... The most ridiculous thing I can think of, but I'm glad to know it's true. Sometimes that works. You know what? You should actually try that from now on. Like we'll present uh, you with that's something. Not fighting games. We'll present you with something and just figure out what would be the most ridiculous answer, and I bet you that would be the the actual answer. That that'd be uh, the DSP trivia game. Oh, so unfortunate. I'm gonna develop depression if that happens. But yeah. <laughs> Phil <laughs> Phil is such a casual. At least I try to go for the platinum trophies. Ooh. <laughs> oh yeah, try going for the platinum trophy in Super Meat Boy. Um, let me see. So Mogul, did you <laughs> get it from the? Did you do you have it? Yeah, I have it on okay. the screen. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. I've been shifting through it. Okay, dope. Um, so as I was uh, as I was saying, uh, Mr. Phil then says, uh, "Versus me, just sitting and playing random songs all day, which has lots of merit, I'm sure, but will probably get really old really fast." Especially after I've gone through the available songs in the game. I think that by starting with just guitar, then upping the guitar difficulty, then moving on to vocals, then buying separate songs to share my musical taste for the very first time with viewers, other than Radiohead, then ultimately doing the finale of me playing slash singing songs that I know well was the perfect way to keep variety and interest going in the event. If I were just playing one-off songs the entire time, it would have probably been incredibly boring after two hours or so. It was uh, boring regardless, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Doesn't matter what... No, go on, comma. 
I was going to say, oh, yeah, musical taste. The guy who doesn't know who Leonard Skinner is is claiming he has musical taste. Ouch. Yeah, he seemed he to just know. like uh, – sorry, go ahead, Mr. Novak. He didn't even know the name of the Queen song. He didn't even know the name of We Are the Champions. What? Are you serious? Like, How the fuck do you not know that? Like, oh, what's that <laughs> one song by Queen, the very famous one? Oh, I can't remember it. Come on now. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, my God. Yeah. Go on, Fred. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Just something generally about uh, about him uh, really enjoying some of the songs that he did. Uh, he really enjoyed, I believe, in A Thing Called Love from uh, The Darkness. Uh, that was incredible to listen to him sing, by the way. We do not we do not speak of that. <laughs> like, the way that I, he did it was ridiculous. Like, uh, yeah, I can't. That's the best I, impression I, I, just, I could do of him trying to sing that. I just can't put into words how fucking bad that was. And I love the darkness. What I think is interesting about uh, him singing, though, um, was... So, you notice, like, when he's singing, like, Shitty fucking dicks and ass and lick my taint and all that shit. He can do that, like, loud, like, at the top of his lungs. Like, he really fucking gets into that, right? Then he gets an actual song, and he's like, he like whispers it like he seemed like a, a shy second grader in choir that doesn't want to be there and he looked constipated <laughs> he looked a bunch of things he looked like he was gonna sneeze he looked like he was yawning he looked like he was in pain somebody uh uh, said something that I actually said privately in a Skype call, and they tweeted it out, and I was just fucking floored by it, uh, that they would be on the same wavelength. They said he looked like he was passing a kidney stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He, 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 he also made a face where I, I joked about, oh, this is what Phil is like when Pandalee actually does give him underwear time. Best face. You know, I'm pretty sure the only reason he even saying like I'm never gonna give you up is just because it's an internet meme. That was his epic finale, dude. Yeah, can we talk about that? I, this concept of like epic finale, like okay, um, so what he did was he started doing uh, um started doing vocals then he like took a break and took a piss and he hurt his arm or whatever the fuck else needed a lozenge his arm is like you know what can we talk about that real quick he's very fragile like just sitting there and playing a game with more than just the controller like moving around and using his voice uh and stuff that like damaged him like his voice was fucked his eye teared up again apparently a very um, fragile moving he's very oh, fragile the eye tearing up thing was great though because like if you're watching he had like these like clumped together strands of hair that were flailing around and when he started bitching about his eye he did say something like he's like i think my hair hit me so like how greasy and dirty does your hair have to be to like make your <laughs> eye water like that pretty incredible pretty incredible um but uh yeah, just, you know, this epic finale he's talking about was doing Rick, Rick Astley, Never Gonna Give You Up. And he, like, did a little bit of a dance before that, and then he was, like, you know, doing... He was trying to embellish it a little bit, but, it, you know, it wasn't that crazy. I mean, he was just, like, when I say this in love. He tried to, like, do extra, but I, I don't know. It wasn't an epic finale. Then he, like, raised his guitar up. Ladies and gentlemen, the gods of rock have spoken. And all that shit, and uh, yeah, I don't it know, was. man. It was it, it it was so bad, especially to end it on a Rick roll. Mm. Like, what kind of person are you, where you end your <laughs> fucking stream on a fucking Rick roll? What kind of person are you? Yeah, man, this is a referendum on him as a person, man. This this is mm. disgusting. We need to we need to rebel. Not not but... not 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 just that, but fucking singing it so poorly. Mm. Hell, I could do better. And that, that, that's saying something, because I don't sing at all. I'm trying to find discussion on the uh, Peasants version of the King of Hate forums, the uh, the standard edition. Because um, there was a little bit of criticism, but uh, honestly, people are just like really, 
really head over heels in love with this playthrough of his. Um, I don't know. To, to, add, you... to add what oh. you were going to say, Jeff, like yeah, when you yeah. were talking about Phil's hair being really dirty and shit, yeah. Uh, well, you got to remember, this is, as Mr. Medicker said, this is the guy who needs to stream chat to tell him how to use shampoo in that fucking Axe bo- body wash video. Wait, what happened? Yeah, you don't remember the DSP shower video? I I, I strayed away from it. I, I know that it exists. I just yeah, ba- basically, Mr. Medicker made a joke that the way he's looking at the camera and everything, it, he even needs the stream chat to tell him how to use the fucking shampoo. Hmm. Oh yeah, he, um, Jeff. You don't know about the shower video? Uh, no. I mean, I've I've heard about it, and I I think maybe I saw it a little bit. Whenever I like hold house parties and stuff like that, whenever I need people to get out, I put DSP tries it on the main TV, and people just like slowly slip out of the house. So That's pretty clever. I think that <laughs> might have been a thing. I think now you can try that rock band stuff of him singing, man. I bet you that will clear uh, it out twice as fast. I think that might <laughs> might be a little too much for the people. Um, but no, tell me about the, uh, the shower video. Um, he made it in 2010. It was a DSP tries it and he thought it would be wise to go in the shower and film himself reviewing an Axe detailer, uh, product. And, uh, it was just ridiculous. Most ridiculous shit ever. Fucking hmm. hairy chest and everything. My goodness. I'll, uh, I'll check it out in a bit. Just you, watch the Mr. Medicare version. It's pretty, it's pretty terrible. I, I feel so bad for you. It's delightful, all right? I remember we were going to do a Let's Endure of a couple of things. <laughs> I slipped it in, and people fucking died. So uh, it's, a, it's a good, like, troll device, you know? Like, if you ever need to troll somebody, like, instead of a Rick roll, send them a fucking, uh, I don't know, a fat roll. How about that? <laughs> huh? The fourth one. The fourth one, Jeff. Um but uh all right so we've got this fantastic thread here in the forums of people just falling over themselves in order to praise phil's rock band playthrough and of course gotta have a mentally ill detractor here 79 posts so definitely he's a sock account uh he says the following i absolutely love the rockathon every second of it the scrolling through the menus was super cool i loved watching him buy songs no requests from the chat apart from one song who cares? It was absolutely awesome. Totally. Seven hour long marathon. Perfect. Flawless. Phil should enter like American Idol or something. His voice is great. Just to update you guys, he mentions Phil buying songs. Uh, Mr. Fizz, who uh, is quite ill at this moment, so we send our best wishes uh, to Mr. Fizz. As a matter of fact, actually, I want to send. Um, I just remembered. And I. I Damn it, I was going to mention this at the beginning of the podcast. So if you're still here, um, I want to mention this. One of our uh, one of our good friends um, actually just checked into the hospital and uh, assumes that they're going to be there over the holidays. Um, I want to get the correct pronunciation. Um, Boronian. At Boronian, uh, they have their Twitter name is Ludist. Boronian, uh, want to send you our well wishes, um, all the best to you, wish you a speedy recovery, and uh, thank you very much for, you know, hanging out with us, supporting us, all that kind of stuff, so our thoughts and prayers to you, and um, I hope everything's alright with you, so. We love you, man. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, Mr. Fizz actually did some calculations, and it turns out that Phil spent roughly. Uh, where did it go? I just had the. I just had the total. I think it's in our chat. F. Um. Damn it! I just had it. Because he was explaining it to someone else. Um. I believe it was. Now I have to like find it. It was $63. He bought 29 songs and he bought one bush pack. Um, so we ended up at $63.20 for um, DLC. And he didn't even end up playing most of those songs. So, yeah. Um, 
I like how you got a thousand two hundred bucks, and then he said, "I can't buy too much DLC," <laughs> and then he doesn't play the DLC that he buys. Yeah, like he spent, <laughs> he he took. So uh, I just want you to think about this as someone. I'm sure you've live streamed plenty of times, right? Uh, yeah, okay. uh, here and there. Imagine that you put your audience through this. You go on a break for about fifteen minutes. Okay, you come back. And then you hang out in the menus for an hour. That's part oh, of a no. seven-hour marathon. Hmm. Yeah. Well, six-hour now, but yeah. He sat in the menus purchasing songs. He actually, so this was the most frustrating part. He went to sort them by pack. He was going pack by pack by pack. And he got to like, I think he got to like the S's or the T's. And then he was like, oh, no, wait a minute. He backed on the menu, and then he sorted the songs by artist. And then started at A and went all the way through again. It was unbelievable. It was, it was, oh, my God. So that's what Mr. Purple Pie points out, that, you know, the menus and all this stuff, kind of unnecessary. Phil's response, or actually, actually, let me, let me, let me give a, a special shout out to one of the fanboy posts here. Uh, they respond, always someone trying to spoil the fun, nitpicking the seven hour stream apart. It was awesome. And what's wrong with picking his favorite songs on stream? Check the sock accounts too, mods. Sock account. Dude with like 79 posts and 17 rep. Like, all right. Phil's response to all this. Yeah. Yeah. So either we get back to the discussion of the marathon and actual constructive stuff, or moderation will hit this thread. Stop bickering with each other and actually discuss the topic. Thanks. Then he quotes Mr. Uh, Purple Pie and says the following. If everything you're going to post about me on the forums, since the John slash Howard roast of me is going to be negative, then leave. Sorry, but I'm pretty sure playing Rock Band for the length of time that I did warrants breaks. And sometime... To browse through songs. If I hadn't taken the time out, you wouldn't have had the epic finale that happened. Try putting stuff into perspective before you become so sarcastic. <laughs> Rick Roll is not an epic finale. Yeah, I hate anyone who even uses the word epic now. Epic memes. Epic fetus. Yeah. Honestly, if he ended off the stream singing Cannibal Corpse, that would have been the funniest shit I've ever heard in my life. I just you know, wanted to put that out there. You know, it would have really been epic. Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. That he wouldn't even work. Oh, what, the, the ones that Leanna <laughs> fell down? <laughs> <laughs> that was the Stairway to Hell in that case. That was the Highway to Hell, actually. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um... Trying to find a couple more. We've got about we've got about twenty five minutes left. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna end about five minutes before the hour and uh, switch gears and go over to um, the Game Awards show. So um, just want to give you guys a heads up if you're interested to that. If not, no hard feelings. Let's see. Internet celebrities, for better or worse, are now a thing. And as a result, so is e-drama. This is a quote from Phil. As a result of the gout, wonder... <laughs> Sorry, I read that incorrectly. As, as a result of the gout wonder putting his entire life online, we now know a lot about him. But wait, who is the gout wonder? Is that him or That's, someone else? Did you not know that Phil has gout? Uh, I, I didn't think that was actually, I thought people were making fun of him for being fat. It's oh, not like man. actually a thing. Ah, uh, see, again, whoever, whoever criticized, well, not criticized, but whoever jabbed at us at saying that we're just here giving Jeff the heads up, this is necessary, all right? This is part of the experience. You gotta know, Jeff, that okay. Mr. Phil received gout as a result of his poor lifestyle choice <laughs> merry christmas <laughs> and a happy new year his stocking was stuffed with a gout foot um anyways he uh he actually used it as like a point of uh man there was there was like a lot of uh hoopla around that uh he actually at one point held his foot up to the camera during a vlog and showed off his foot like uh here you go he uh he went to the doctor he complained about how much money that cost him. 
He then uh, had to take some medication, and there was an entire movement around giving him healthy foods that he can eat that are going to um, help the gout. Uh, mm, people, not Arby's. <laughs> no gout about it. No gout about it. Some I'll people start. suggested uh, cherry juice. Some people <laughs> suggested uh, different fruits and vegetables, and uh, yeah. And so, okay, so, you know... <laughs> I, I just want to give this as inspiration and all that back. I'm sorry to derail this for a second here, but it goes back into what you're talking about. Uh, from like 2012 to 2014, I was starting to gain uh, a little bit of weight. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think my max was at 160. And then this year, I, I really took it upon myself. It took, it took me one year. For me to lose uh, about 30 pounds okay so i'm about what's that 30 pounds yeah something like that i don't know anyway all you have to do is like cut out all drinks that are not like water yes you know you could cheat like every once in a while have a v8 or or like a, a soda or something every right. once in a while you know right. and just eat lesser portions you don't even have to work out like I, I do DDR as a workout. That doesn't do anything at all for like weight loss or anything. That's just cardio. But like, just eat less for fuck's sake, you know. Like, be used to being a little hungry at times. That's all it is. But. Right. I mean, something that I found very successful um, is to save ridiculous things for a cheat day. Give yourself a day to just have whatever the fuck you were thinking about all week. Oh, I want to have this i want to go out to a restaurant and get this and this give yourself a cheat meal and just go ridiculous and that way you feel as though you can sort of you know relax during the week you know like you have something to look forward to you know and that's not that's 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 actually being proactive that's g- taking a step you know to actually go out and start to diet and, and all that kind of stuff to give yourself a cheat meal but I mean, to what you said, absolutely. Cutting out soda, uh, just drinking water, um, you will, uh, just by being hydrated, you know? Um, well, yeah, I mean, just, you know, smaller portions is the biggest thing to take from all that. It's like, people eat after they're full for some reason. It doesn't make any sense at all. I, I know that some people have, you know, gland problems or whatever the fuck, and then that's completely understandable, but you take a look at... Um, uh, I, I see a, a lot of retweets of what Phil eats, and it seems like he is <laughs> doesn't know what a salad tastes like. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, just like I, I, I like bottom of my heart, I legitimately worry about people like that. You know, you got to eat well, like you got to treat your body as like a sacred temple of some sort. You know, you, you don't want to like, yeah, you can eat crappy food every once in a while, but like. I, I just don't understand how people can, like, look at themselves and be like, yeah, this is just fine. You know, I'm out of breath. You know, I'm trying to show the camera on my foot that has gout. And now I'm suffering from a stroke from trying to do that, you know. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. And uh, just a quick science fact for people, I guess, before we get off the topic, just something to help you out. Um, if you have some ice cold water as soon as you wake up in the morning, it'll get your metabolism going. And it'll be a great start to your day. That is what you should do. That is my tip for you that anybody can do. As soon as you wake up in the morning, drink a glass of extremely cold water if you can. Like, I'm not exactly sure. In my case, uh, I've gone down to the point where by portions I would eat like maybe a two, three ounce like uh, skinless chicken breast per meal. And that would be it. And... I would feel so hungry, so out of energy and everything. And then when I would have a cheat day, suddenly my weight would just really jump for some reason. So I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or what. So anyways, um, all right, let's uh, let's continue on here. So um, this was uh, an, a – sorry, this was a uh, – I'm reading, I'm reading people's uh, – somebody said to drink rum in the morning. It's pretty good. Um <laughs> Ice Ice cold cold gin. gin. That's good. All right. So back to the uh, viewer submitted. Quote, internet celebrities for better or for worse are now a thing. And as a result, so is e-drama. 
Quote from Phil. As a result of the gout wonder putting his entire life online, we now know a lot about him, and the recent John Rambo situation is a prime example. As a YouTuber, YouTuber myself, I'm fairly candid, but I would never air my dirty laundry at my colleagues the way Phil has. What's your thoughts on a person selling people out that he knows in real life for the approval of mostly angry 14-year-olds submitted by Ghastly Tales in parentheses Callum? I'm sorry, it cut out there. What did he say? Oh, sorry, did I cut out? No, I. Okay. it's I'm probably me. just my connection here. Okay. Um, essentially, somebody saying, um, what does it what does it say to Phil's character um, to sort to essentially like sell out his friends for the approval of mostly angsty fourteen year olds, which is uh, presumed to be his audience by this man here, Ghastly Tales. You know, I, I'm going to take a look at that. I say it's a positive experience because, like, he needs to lose everything before he starts appreciating what he has. And from mm. there, he'll build himself into a much better person. And if not, then it'll be funny to make a YouTube video about it. So, hmm, very interesting. Any other thoughts um, on that? Um, I don't know if anyone else has anything. I'm done. <laughs> I mean, to sell out his friends like that. It's stupid. It really is. Those guys were with him through thick and thin, and then they, he just basically told them to go F themselves when he was getting popularity. It's not cool. I wouldn't do that to Haseo, you know? It's, it's pretty shitty to do that, uh, especially the fact that Giddy. I actually liked John Rambo more than Phil uh, when it comes to commentary, because actually John Rambo was actually pretty genuine, and Phil was the one that was just there to make stupid ass jokes i don't know i think it's real shitty that uh he would do something like that and kind of whatever respect that uh i would have had before then i probably would have lost it by then because of this but i already lost it a long ass time ago because he is a piece of shit but that's all i can really say so um while we have this little break in the action before we uh before we end the show here, uh, just another piece of uh, serious business. Our uh, good friend, and I just recently learned how to pronounce this name. I was completely mispronouncing it. I actually learned the uh, the German phrase of uh, Schadenfreuden, and I did not know that that's how that was pronounced. So I've actually been pronouncing Schadenfreuden's name incorrectly. Um, but uh, I... Uh, I just had a, a couple things. First of all, she she reached out to me, and uh, just said, you know, she um, appreciates the kindness of uh, a few people. So uh, why not? Let's let's give a shout out to these people uh, on the air on behalf of Miss Shadden Freiland. Uh, so uh, we would like to recognize Mr. Hungarian World Order, Mr. Doper, W T J E. And Draguno, she um, she was having a little bit of trouble uh, in her life, and these three gentlemen came along and uh, helped her this holiday season. Uh, I'm actually touched to find out about this, so um, that's fantastic. So um, just want to give some recognition, and this is just, I mean, this this honestly just rolled in while we were doing this podcast um it makes me proud to be part of this community and i think that um this sort of positive camaraderie this sort of uh it's it's just it's it's a community it's a community like people can just use that term about anything but people want to help each other out people care about each other it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing so thank you for letting me know that this was going on i'm more than happy to uh to report that kind of stuff um so thank you shadden and uh again special special shout out to hungarian world order doper w t j e and draguno that's awesome that, it's uh, a oh, okay. really nice start to the christmas season huh yeah that's that's really awesome to hear that more people are getting involved helping others out and really makes me happy to hear that that's beautiful uh, how, how do you really pronounce is. her name again? 
Shaden Freilin. And I, that, that could be just me <clears throat> butchering it, but it, I'm taking it from that German uh, term for like taking pleasure in someone else's downfall, which would be Shaden Freilin. Ah. Uh, well, it looks like I've been pronouncing it wrong too. <laughs> <laughs> and fuck Drago now. Yeah, he needs to go get himself a new bike. My German sucks, so <laughs> I I absolutely could be mispronouncing that. But again, can't wait for that to be quoted. Again, that's absolutely heartwarming. Uh, that's touching, and uh, yeah, I um, she she actually sent me. A, what was the name again? Say it again. The name of her. Yeah. Schaden Fräulein. Or Fräulein. Okay. Again, my German sucks, so... Uh, it's it's uh, Ferlin. Ferlin? Uh, I mean, it's a girl. Ferlin, yes. Ferlin, okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. So my apologies for the uh, mispronunciation. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying with my German. I've... Hugo would be very <laughs> satisfied. He's trying, trying very, very hard. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, she, um, she actually sent me a DM talking just about um, what's been going on and how she appreciates the community and stuff like that and uh it was really touching so uh thank you for that and yeah thanks for letting us know what's going on all right um hmm. i don't know what else to do what else are we gonna do we got a couple minutes jeff you're the uh you're the guest of honor what are we gonna do what are we what are we gonna close this show with before we cover the fucking game awards what you got man let's talk about politics let's talk about politics control. oh gun control all right you start <laughs> <laughs> uh you guys go ahead no 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 no, no. <laughs> please please don't don't let us impose let the fine people at home know what are we going to do with gun control we'll all be know. right back we, obviously we need to replace more human beings with guns in this country and then there will be no more guns what does dsp think about gun control that's my question dsp actually <laughs> it's actually funny you bring that up um phil was asked about gun control and he actually used that as an opportunity to talk about us and himself. <laughs> oh, God. I swear hey, to you, Jeff. I swear to you, you this happened. Are you fucking kidding me right he now? He was asked about gun control, and he said, well, obviously, I'm not going to talk about that. But I do want to say, you know, there are responsible gun owners I'm out there. i shoot these fuckers in chaos. <laughs> there are responsible gun owners out there, and it just takes a few to represent the whole. And I very much am familiar with that because, you know... For me, people take small things that I do and use that to represent me as a whole. Like people will see a couple videos about me and they'll think that that's who I am. So I'm Perfect. the victim of this kind of stuff. And used it that's to talk a... about us and that this is how you don't play oh. movement. Shout out to Evil AJ. And uh, yeah, it was fantastic. Hey, Jed, uh, you did hear about the whole swatting thing too. Just wonder i did yeah I, I saw the footage behind the swatting thing um i'm assuming none of you guys were behind that right none of us were behind that as no, a matter of fact make it sure as a matter of fact yeah um we spoke out against it because again like right as i said at the top of the show part of the reason why i like your style is because you always keep it lighthearted. you're not trying to you know uh fucking damage a person you're just trying to have fun Right. Yeah, and absolutely. You, you, yeah, no. The, the, I'm sure you agree with this, but that that swatting thing was pretty fucked up. It was. Uh, it was I, uh, it you know, is I, I feel fucked like Darkside Phil did a really smart thing actually by actually calling the cops beforehand and warning them. Right. Um, that that is that <laughs> kind of blew my mind that he did something like that because other people should be doing stuff like that too. But how did he know that he was going to be swatted though? Were they like threatening him in the chat or something or what? Well, he's just generally paranoid about those sort of things. He actually oh, did that mind. as soon as um, he actually did it as soon as he moved, he contacted his local police department and I, it's, it's possible that because he did that, he wasn't the victim of like a no knock raid where they literally just kick open his door with the SWAT team and fucking, you know, because those are nasty. The no knock raids are nasty because, uh, as I was told by one of my friends not too long ago, um, they're trained to like shoot your pets if they, cause they're, they can potentially be a threat. You know, if they see like a dog or something, they're trained to like immediately kill it and fucking, you know, go in there and get everybody on the ground and you know what I mean? Yeah. Use as much force as possible 
uh, without... Yeah, they neutralize the situation, assuming that really is a hostage, because, like, well, no one wants to die, so, right. you know, like, you know, a little fi- Fido's barking over here, yeah, you have to put him down. So, so Phil didn't actually get a no-knock raid. What happened was there were uh, a number of police officers, he didn't exactly say, um, that uh, called out to him on a megaphone, he then went outside with Leanna. Two officers came into the house and just made sure that nothing was going on. They cleared the house, I guess would be the terminology. And then Phil and Leanna came in the house and they all yucked it up with the police officers before they left. So, yeah. Um, God, I thought know. they tear gassed them before they left, but. Uh. <laughs> but. Right, what, go ahead, Mr. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Come. I was going to say, um, would, would they have considered the hamsters a threat, though? Well, no, I don't no, no, no. like anything that could approach roaming. them. Basically, yeah, free like, roaming pets. out there. Yeah. Unless <laughs> Dark Side Phil has his hamsters running around. In the, they run around in a the ball. <laughs> but, no, uh, I got this. <laughs> fucking them. But uh, but yeah. So, anyways, uh, um, it it wasn't uh, as bad as it could have been. But yeah, we were not happy about it. It's not what we were looking forward to. Um, I actually uh, increased the audio of the incident and put it out uh, essentially in its full form because I saw people on Twitter that were saying that it was a hoax and that it wasn't real and mm. that this was a sympathy plea. So I wanted to show people um, with better audio quality so that they can actually see what happened, that it was legitimate. And Yeah, when I, when I asked you guys if you were behind it, that was tongue-in-cheek entirely. I, I know. Oh, for okay. That. First of all, that's illegal as shit. So, you know, yeah. like, everyone who would admit that would be fucking retarded, but... Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah but, um, yeah, just thought I'd throw that out there that, yeah, we were uh, not too happy about it, actually. But, again, like, we can't, like, do anything. Like, we can't tell people what to do and... Shit like that. Yeah, no, it's it's individuals. That's that's basically all this. And that's did the they have, they never found out who did it, right? I I don't know. I don't know if he would update people on that or not. Um, obviously, all of us in the SOK are still here. So uh, uh, if they did find him, it wasn't us. Uh, so mm. okay. But, Interesting. Uh, but yeah, um, I guess that is a, a situation where yes, yeah, some outlier, some extremist, someone that's not. Uh, that's not uh, in tune with everyone else that takes things a little too seriously. They end up, you know, doing something like that. And uh, it's unfortunate, but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so yeah, we got a couple more minutes. Um, what else, Jeff? What do you got? I'm going to put you on the spot, man. What, what you got? For okay. Us? I mean, we could go straight back to gun control and All talk right. about what you think Phil thinks about that. Um, well, again, he said that, uh, there are responsible gun owners out there. Um, he basically left it to no opinion. He doesn't want to say something. Uh, No opinion. Okay. And then talked about us. So I thought that he would hoard guns himself or whatever, but I don't don't think he does own a gun. I don't know. He never talked about it. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I'm pretty sure he's too scared to hold one, but that's fine. Like, would, did he... kill, would Phil kill someone with a gun if he had to? That's the biggest question. Oh, yeah. I mean, he'd have yeah. terrible aim, and he'd probably shoot about six times, <laughs> you know, and talk about why can't I reload and shit. Um, <laughs> what? You know, this... I didn't equip, what? I didn't equip the M9. I didn't equip the coolant. I remember. Uh... <laughs> but a jack is coming after me. Something me. else. There's this, there's this game called Dive Kick out there. I was talking to uh, one of the designers of it. And I was asking, hey, they should put Dark Side Phil in the game. I don't know if you know what di- Dive Kick is. It's a two button game where you jump yeah. and you dive kick. There's no blocking or whatever. I play that. And, and, I play that game with my friends all the time. It's really fun. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Phil doesn't jump or do anything like that. He just kind of like rolls around and can't really attack, so he can't win at all. But like whenever he gets hit, <laughs> just gets someone his voice clip. I was blocking that or something. That shit been pretty I was one blocking of his attacks that. Would be, dude, I would have okay? bought twenty more copies of Dive Kick if that were. But it is what it is. Actually, one of his attacks should just be a big belch. <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah, he could be. That could be his attack. I don't know. I kind of like him just like rolling around on the floor, not really having a purpose other around like he's going to loop, but lose five straight it was just how long can you drag out the rounds for, you know, because that feels like a true homage to DSP videos. <laughs> like that I don't know. I thought it was genius. Apparently not uh, <laughs> because they never did that. They put Johnny Gadden. Oh, well, close enough. 
They put the Nidhogg guy in it recently. Yeah, the think. fencer, yeah. Yeah. All right, I've yeah, got they're... one more piece of news before we get the fuck out of here for tonight. Let's uh, let's end this podcast on something positive. I just got another message from our uh, our good friend Shaden. I've got some news for you guys. This is also gonna warm your hearts. Shaden's Shoot daughter. <clears throat> Shaden's daughter has just finished her IV chemo. She's had her last over chemo tablet as of tomorrow and thus her last chemo ever she's officially kicked cancer's ass that hey. is so fucking I awesome am so i am so happy for her so congratulations <laughs> that that is amazing that's good it really is. That's I'm happy. that's so awesome. Dude, I am I am so happy to hear about that. Her daughter is such a badass, kicked cancer's ass. That's that's. When she grows up. She can. Uh, she has the story to tell. You know, I kicked cancer's ass. Best early I've accomplished gift ever. Big thing in life. A seven-year-old. She's so strong and so brave. A seven-year-old kicked cancer's ass. It's it's just so beautiful and. Um, <clears throat> That's that's, God, that's man, really I'm gonna, so I'm gonna fucking cry. Thank you very much again, Shaden, for uh <laughs> sharing this with, with us. And uh yeah, I um uh, it's beautiful. I uh Well yeah, that's uh I don't know her or anything, but that's that's a great story. Yeah. I'm always happy to hear uh people uh making it out of cancer. It's a terrible terrible disease and uh yeah yeah hope yeah. uh hope something happens from it man I just... a lot of people die from that yeah. It's, yeah it sucks i've lost a lot of people some family too so it's, it's not a pleasant thing dealing with uh cancer on my side of uh, things as well but it's, it's always good to know that uh you know people do make it out it's uh I guess the earlier it's caught the better it is for you. But um yeah. you know. We'll see how it goes. And uh something that uh, means a lot to me, uh more than I think people could ever know, um, is that uh she actually reached out to me and she uh said the same thing in the chat that um she watched the show while she was going through all of this with her daughter. And uh, it brought some entertainment to her, and uh, it brought her some uh, sense of sanity and, and stuff like that during that uh, that whole process. So um, I'm uh, means a lot. It that really means a lot to me. Well, that's what we're here for. We're here to help people like that do these tough times. So, <clears throat> I'm I'm really happy to hear that, though. So glad yeah. about your kid. Fucking kicking cancer's ass. That's that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, it really is. It really is. It's a, it's a huge deal. I'm really happy about that. Yes, congratulations on your daughter's victory against cancer. It's amazing. My best wishes go to your kid's future. All right. Especially knowing that she's safe. So, uh, all right. So that uh, that was a moment. Uh, all right. So <laughs> that's it for this. We're going to uh, switch over to the Game Awards show that's going to start in just a little bit. So uh, let's do some sign-offs. Uh, Mr. Mogul, where can we find you? Where are you up to? Um, you can find me on YouTube under MogulMaster102, where I do Let's Plays and other gaming content. I also do uh, streams as well. Uh, I really should start streaming again. I haven't done that in forever. Uh, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Um, you can also find me on Twitter under Moogle Senpai. And that's pretty much it. Mr. Kama. You can find me at 
on Twitter at Kamasubu, and that's it. Mr. Freddy Fastfuck. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at TTSBB1, and you can find my YouTube at Freddy Fastfuck, and you can find my Twitch also at TTSBB1, where I will be streaming more Afterbirth more often. Oh, you play Binary Isaac? Yes. yes cool. Uh, give me your contact info. I like watching that stream. All right. <laughs> you got another viewer. Good Wait. job, man. <laughs> I just had a toilet flush. Yeah, you know, I'm fucker. <laughs> You're busted, man. You're fucking gone. busted. You. you... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Carson Miles. <laughs> Sorry, I calm down for a second. <laughs> um, you can find me at um, two places. You can find me at my Twitters are Dark Seal Phil and uh, Miles S Reset. I'm on both of them frequently. Um, you can find me on YouTube. Actually, after uh, the start of the new year, I'm moving locations, so I'll be doing Let's Plays actually on my channel for once at Miles Above. Yeah, it's really weird. I know. Um, and you can find me also again starting probably within the next few months, I shouldn't be gaming again. Uh, Haseo and I are going to start back up on maybe a few things, possibly. So, Mr. Yeah. Ghost Dragon. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and YouTube at GhostDragon1182. And that's about it. I'm still kind of taken by the everything that's been talked about the last five minutes or so. Yeah. I tried. I was cr almost crying myself. Mr. Mr. Nomad. You can find me on Twitter, which is at the Dark Lurker, where I tweet about random uh, miscellaneous pinups and vintage eye candy. So, yeah. I think I got it. Did I get everybody but Jeff? All right. And of course, I guess the uh, Yeah, hey, Mr. I'm Hero. Jeff again. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter on uh, twitter.com slash Jeff the Hero. That's G E O F F T H E H E R O. Um,. And uh, my parents spelled my name wrong, by the way. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube as well. YouTube.com slash DarksideJeff. That's the same thing as before. But yeah, if you guys want to chat or whatever on Twitter, uh, however you felt like I performed, how we all performed and all that, I'd love to get some feedback on this. So I uh, really appreciate you guys coming out here. I had a lot of fun. Learned a lot of things. And uh, made a lot of great memories and new friends. And that's all that matters. Ah, uh, that's beautiful. Positive man. thoughts, everyone. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll definitely keep in touch, man. And uh, maybe we'll do this again sometime if you're uh, if you're available. We're, uh, yeah, we'll be yeah, happy to have you. And uh, good. of course, yours truly, Fred Fox. You can find me on Twitter at T I H Y D P, the acronym for. Uh, let's see. This is how you don't pretend not to cry on air. You can also find me <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, I think it's just search Fred Fox in YouTube and you'll find, uh, the, yeah, you can find, uh, two different accounts. One that had some antics and one that is the backup account in case there were antics. Yeah, I could tell, the <laughs> I could predict the future. You see, uh, you can also find me right here along with all of these fine people at hitbox.tv slash Sons of Kojima, or on our YouTube, Sons of Kojima on YouTube, where you'll probably hear this if you weren't here live. All right, we need to get out of here. We're running a little bit late. We are going to switch over to the Game Awards show. We made some predictions. I'll give you guys the Google Doc. We'll probably rename this late, so it probably won't even reflect the fact that it's the Gaming Awards show. Anyways, we love you. Go fuck yourselves. Good night. We're going to, yeah. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>